Excel Carols and this video is all about making your job easier if creating forecast or budgeting is your constant exercise. Forecasting usually requires some formulas to predict future values based on some past data related to sales, production or other key performance indicators. In this video, we will talk about a wonderful feature of MS Excel which will give you all such forecasts and guess what, we are not going to use any VBA or any complex formula. To demonstrate the feature, we have a monthly data of passengers in an airport from January 2009 to September 2013. For convenience, this has already been converted to a table format and now we will try to predict the future data using a line graph. To do that, select the data, go to the insert tab and let's choose a simple line graph. And there we go. Here we can see a lot of crests and troughs. So there's definitely a seasonality involved in the numbers. The basic way to predict future values with the help of past data is to add a trend line. Select any of the data points, right mouse button and add a trend line. Let's drag our linear graph towards the format box select the trend line and let's change the color make it red and put it thicker so that it is prominently visible now we do see that our trend line is not fitting the data let's keep the r squared value before us r squared value is the coefficient of determination and is always between 0 to 1. The higher the R squared value, the better is our trend line fitting the data. And over here, it's somewhere around 0 0.3, which means the trend line is not fitting the data. Let's toggle between the trend line option and still it is nowhere close to 1, which makes it clear that this approach will not let us predict the future values because there is a seasonality involved in the data. So we have to apply some other approach. Let's delete this line graph. Our job here is to forecast the number of passengers after September 2013 and there is a seasonality in the past data. So we need a function that takes the seasonality in consideration. The forecast function which is available in all the versions from Excel 2016 is an appropriate solution to this. Let's see how does this work. Select the data, go to the data tab and we have forecast sheet in the forecast section. Click on forecast sheet, the dialog box opens up and we can see that our past data has been plotted in a linear graph. The blue lines here are the actual data and the orange lines are the forecasted values. These faded lines are the upper and the lower confidence bounds and if our level of significance is 5% then 95% of our forecasted values will lie in this range. Let's have the forecast till March 2014. We can customize it even more. Let's expand the options and choose the forecast start date from two points above our actual data so that we can verify the accuracy of this feature. Let's keep the confidence interval at 95%. Regarding seasonality, we can see that Excel automatically detects it and the user tool has the option to change it. Since we can see that the feature has picked the seasonality, let's keep it unchanged. In case the algorithm was not able to recognize the pattern, we would have changed it to 12 because we have monthly data before us. Timeline and value ranges are already set because we selected the data set earlier. 
Let's also keep the interpolation and average values unchanged. Click on create and Excel will give the forecast in a different sheet. Here we have the historical data as well as the forecasted values along with the lower and the upper confidence bounds which is plotted in this graph. In case we need to change anything in the data we can do it and the graph will be updated automatically. Let's scroll down and we can see that the first forecast is accurate but these forecasts are little deviated from our actual data. This is because Excel forecasts these values with the help of ETS or Exponential Triple Smoothing Algorithm which is an algorithm used to handle time series data containing seasonal component and this algorithm sets value between the lower and the upper confidence bounds which is very close to our actual data. If we were supposed to forecast the values of subsequent months we would have considered a value in between the lower and the upper confidence bounds. So we have created the forecast without using much of statistics or programming. Hope you found this video useful. If yes, give a thumbs up, share it as much as you can, put up your feedback in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon in order to get all the notifications. Music